Hi, it's Carrie from Classic Cottage Art and Antiques in Bowling Green, Virginia, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Creating a Classic Cottage. Today, I'm going to show you how to paint on fabric with Dixie Belle Chalk Mineral Paint. But first, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. So, come on, let's get started. Did you know that you can paint fabric with Dixie Belle Chalk Mineral Paint? Yep do it all the time. This is the sample I have in the store. It's kind of a not the best looking piece of fabric, but this is just to show you that you can. So let me show you some other examples of things that I've painted that are fabric before we get to the project today. <clears throat> I painted these uh, sneakers. They were just your plain everyday white sneakers and I had some teenagers help me pick the colors and I thought they did a great job and they're holding up great. This has been done for about, oh gosh, two or three years now they've been like this. So that's one thing you can do with them. You can also create canvas work. This is just a drop cloth that I made into a canvas and I painted on it. So yeah, you can paint fabric with Dixie Belle paint. Another thing I've done with painting fabric is you can fix those jeans with uh, worn spots in them. Um, I did this one alive a while back, but this is just a, a case where I used the Dixie Belle Chalk Mineral Paint and I embroidered around my design. I think I used rubber stamps and then embroidered around my designs. So, and it's gonna hold up through the wash once it's dried really, really well. Another thing that I've done with the Dixie Belle Chalk Mineral Paint is, this was a really ugly chair. As you can tell <laughs> right here it was a really ugly fabric but this is what it looks like now so you can cover up really really ugly fabric with the chalk mineral paint and it holds up so tonight's project is gonna be my office chair I painted my desk and I decided to give this chair a make, uh, makeover this is the color that it is now, which doesn't go with my bright blue paint anymore. And we're gonna paint it, actually the color of this table, and if you can see, it is actually Stormy Seas, the Dixie Belle Stormy Seas color. There's a little bit of prep before you paint with the paint on fabric. First, I vacuumed it really well. Um, it was kind of dusty from being in the shop here. And then for my chair, sometimes you can take these apart. I didn't want to take the time to do that, but what I am going to do is, look at you, I'm going to tape off the parts I don't want to paint. And I'm going to do that, and I'm going to make sure that I tape it. There's a little lip here, and I'm going to make sure that I get that covered as well. And I may have to do a couple of different pieces of tape to do that. Now, the project, because it takes a little while for this to dry on fabric, especially if you're doing it on upholstered fabric, may not get completely finished tonight, but I'm gonna show you how to get started doing it. I've done this several times, and I've done it on a um, footstool at my home, but it works really good. Now, this has got a tear in it, so in all likelihood, I'm gonna paint this tonight, but I may decide to just recover just this part because there is a hole and the paint obviously isn't going to cover up the hole. So what I'm using is the Dixie Belle Chalk Mineral Paint Stormy Seas because that's the color I chose. And the one thing about painting with on fabric is you want to use a natural bristle brush. This is going to hold up better to the amount of pressure that you have to put on this. So use a natural bristle brush. This is the Dixie Bell Bell brush. And the synthetic brushes are actually too um, squishy is a good word. They're too squishy, but the natural bristles hold up really good. They're stiffer and so they work the paint into the fabric better. I'm also gonna use a little bit of water. And I'm going to try a technique one of our brand ambassadors has where you mix the paint with the Dixie Belle Best Staying Wax. And this is the clear. And I've already mixed mine up. So this is not a really scientific way, uh, measurements. I'm just measuring until it's 
about equal parts of each. And then I added a little bit of water. When my paint's run, I'm gonna add a little bit more water. I've also done this where you can just do paint and water. But I'm gonna try this way and see what happens. Now let me show you what I've already got down here. I already did the bottom of the seat. Get it so you can see it. Okay, this is the bottom of the seat that I've already done. Uh, I'm going to tell you first off, your first coat is going to be ugly. That's just the nature of this. Your first coat is going to be ugly. This was done with just paint and water, and I dried it with the fan and the hair dryer. It's been here for a little bit. So now I'm going to do is I took the Best Stain Wax and Clear, and I mixed it on my plate Whoops, with my paint, which is Stormy Seas. And there's not a whole lot of science to that. <clears throat> and you're gonna take, and you're gonna massage it in, I'm gonna start up here so you can see. You're just gonna massage it into your fabric. And that's why you wanna use the natural bristle brush. You see, you have to do it kind of hard. Now, also forgot to mention, after a vacuum, there was a lot of little pilling, little balls that roll up on your fabric here. I actually took the scissors and cut those out. And I will tell you up front, it's going to start pilling again if that's the type of fabric that you have. Different types of fabric behave different ways. Upholstery fabric may not exactly do this. This chair is crazy old. I had it for so long. <laughs> but basically, you're just going to do that. Now, it seems a little dry to me, so I'm going to give my brush a little bit of water. I may have to mix up some more paint and wax here. But basically, I am going to really put some pressure on it. And get it. And like I said, the first coat is gonna look ugly, way, way ugly. You're gonna think, what have I gotten myself into? Down here, I've already started with the wax and the paint. You can rub it this way, you can rub it straight, however you can get it on there. <clears throat> and I am gonna have to mix up some more paint. No problem. And wax. This time I think I'm gonna do it in a bowl so I can mix it better. So I'm just gonna scoop out some wax, the best dang wax and clear. Now, it looks white, but it's actually clear, it dries clear. And I'm gonna take maybe, and I am not being precise at all. I said I'm making a big mess is what I'm doing. And I tend to be a messy painter, so there you go. And you're just gonna mix it up. Every so often, I like to spritz it with a little bit of water. Some people say that you're doing, you're staining the fabric. That's a good way to explain it. But by putting the wax with the paint, it kind of saves me a step. One of our brand ambassadors showed how to do this on one of her videos, and I thought, ooh, let me try that. And I think I'm just gonna get it just slightly more damp. And I'm not a whole lot. I don't want my, I don't want my fabric to be soppy wet. I made that mistake when I first started doing this. It didn't work, it worked, but it just didn't come out as like I wanted it to. All right, let's keep going here. So I've got my wax and my paint, and I think I'm just gonna go down here and start and go up. If you have any questions, just let me know. And if I get tired of going back and forth, I'm just going to go in circles. Now, you probably could take this back of this chair off. I didn't want to take the time to do that this time. All right. And if it feels dry to you, put a little bit of water on your brush. You don't need a whole lot. I actually have already put paint on this spot. I didn't want the light color of the foam showing through on my red, so I went ahead and painted it red before. All right, so you kind of get the idea. Basically, you just paint it on there. When you're taping off, though, make sure you tape off for anywhere you think you don't want the paint to be. And like I said, this is going to look really, really ugly for the first coat. 
You may have to do more than two coats. That's okay. This is a whole lot cheaper than most, in most cases, than buying fabric to reupholster your chairs. Is it gonna come off on your clothing when you sit there? No, uh, as long as it's dry, it won't. Is it gonna feel stiff? No, as long as you do the next step that I show you in just a moment. I'm just gonna do this much for right now. All right, so let me show you something that's interesting. This is what I just did with the wax and the paint. Um, on the seat here is what I did with just the water and the paint. And see how much lighter it is? I think I like it better with the wax. So the next step would be once your paint has dried, and you do this between every coat. I like to take these little sanding blocks, but you need to sand it because it's going to be rough and it's going to raise the fibers of the fabric. I don't know if you can tell or not, but right here still feels, sounds very smooth. Over here, it sounds rough. This side I've sanded, this side I haven't. So basically to sand, I'm gonna scoot you back so you don't have too much sanding noise in your ears. Just sand it. And sometimes, see where it has peeled up here? It's gonna take away some of those pill things. definitely want to make sure it's completely dry before you do this part or it's just going to make a big mess. As you can see these little fabric pieces are falling off and it's getting smoother and this is how you make it so it's not really stiff once it's painted. A lot of people think oh my gosh it's going to be really really stiff if I paint it but if you do the sanding between every coat it is not stiff. I mean, that's, that's soft as it can be right now. All right, so let's continue. I'm gonna go ahead and do the second coat here. This part is not 100% dry, but this part is, so I'm gonna do it right in the center here, just kind of so you can see the second coat. Now you might need a third coat of this. Depending on if you're taking a dark color or if you're covering up a dark color with a light color of paint like I am, it might need more than two coats. But it doesn't take a whole lot of paint. And I'm only doing the center right now because this is the driest part. And I'm gonna kind of really, really get it in there. So I wanted to get through all those little fibers. Of course, the other option would be to reupholster this. Just cover it with fabric. Um, depends on what you want to do. I'm just getting the paint Oops. here. But you can see already that it's that it's brighter and that it's covering really, really well. Now, because I put the wax in the paint, I shouldn't have to do any other kind of sealing. If in fact that you don't have wax and you just want to do this with the paint and water, you just need to spray damp, just slightly dampen your surface and just use the paint. Same thing, you still need to sand in between coats. At the end, you can either choose not to do anything and it should be fine, but you can also choose to use the Dixie Bell Easy Peasy Spray Wax instead of the Best Dang Wax. So, I mean, it does look like a hot mess right now. It really does. But when it's all done and finished and sanded, it's going to be beautiful up against my, my new paint job on my desk. It really is. So, and I, of course, will go and do the rest of this. I just wanted to show you the first coat. First coat, second coat. And then when you get finished, the last thing you do before you seal, if you decide to seal, is to sand it again. And you'll have a really smooth, smooth chair to sit on. I've seen people do this on sofas. 
I've seen people do this on chairs like this, uh, just seats of a chair. I did it on a footstool at home, a little footstool. Uh, the only thing is I would say if your fabric has a nap like velvet or that kind of stuff, you can, you can paint it, but if it has, like if you run your hand across your fabric and it kind of changes color from light to dark, make sure that on your last stroke that you go down with your paint, with your brush, I mean. Make sure that you go like, make it go flat is the best way to explain it. And it'll do much better. But you can paint that kind of fabric. It is a little bit more of a challenge, but you can in fact do that. Now I'm gonna need probably a third coat because I'm going from this dark red to this more of a lighter gray blue color. So I'm gonna need an extra coat of paint, at least one more coat of paint. But I just thought I'd give you a quick demo of how to paint with fabric. And when this is all finished, I'll, I'll post a picture of it. So if you wanna give this a try, this fabric painting, let me know if you tried it and put a picture in the comments so I can see how yours turned out looks like now if I can get you down here so you can see it there we go it is pretty much done two coats maybe three I lost count of the stormy seas and this is I know at least three coats so you want to see the red still coming through maybe a little bit the lighting may not be so great uh, what I discovered is I told you to paint with wax and paint and I think I put too much wax in my paint so less wax more paint if you're going to do it that way i decided i like to do it paint the fabric with just water and paint from now on i think it goes on much better red is still showing through and that's where i sanded also when you sand what i've discovered is uh, i used too heavy of a grit of sandpaper so it kept sanding all of my paint off and by putting too much wax in the paint that was also part of the problem for sanding it off. So I went to a lower grit with my little sanding sponge and that worked beautifully. So don't forget to sand in between every coat. It'll make it soft and smooth. As a matter of fact, you can probably tell, it's not sounding rough at all. It might sound a little rough to you, but to me it feels really, really soft. This is gonna look really good next to brand new painted desk. If you go back and look at the befores, this, I know this is, this is a tear right here, so I may actually end up covering this up. But this was an ugly red. And just remember, if you're painting, don't add as much wax in your paint. Or better yet, just use paint and water and you'll have a better result, I think. So, that's going to be it for now. Bye.